So this happened a few months ago. I'm a sophomore in college and was traveling down to my hometown over break. I was having some relationship issues with my stepmom, so I didn't want to stay at my dad's house the night I arrived at my hometown. So I phoned a friend of mine from high school if I could stay at his place. I knew from social media that he was still in town, and I've stayed at his place before, so I knew there would be a place for me to stay if they could allow it. My friend, let's call him Z, seemed like a pretty normal dude. We weren't best friends or anything, but we got pretty close by the time we graduated. We would occasionally text or hang out if I was in town and catch up, reminisce on the times we spent in orchestra or in English class. When I called, he seemed extremely enthusiastic. Z's a normally upbeat guy, but this time it seemed like he was getting a brand new car. I didn't think about it at the time, and he said I could sleep in the guest room, so I headed over. When I got to his house, he was just as excited as he was on the phone. He was bringing up stuff to do like getting high and watching weird movies or playing video games. Z's parents weren't home, so he really wanted the opportunity to smoke. I was pretty tired from the drive, but since we rarely see each other, I thought a little bit of bonding couldn't hurt. We played Smash Bros, smoked some weed, and just chatted for a few hours. It was longer than I wanted, but I was having fun, so whatever, right? By the time it was getting late, around 2am, he started asking some pretty weird questions, like if I ever wondered what it was like to kill someone, or if I thought anyone would miss me if I was gone. This along with some pretty normal questions like if I had a boyfriend, or how my parents are doing, or if I'm making any friends at school, gave me a weird feeling. I was confused in the moment, but it didn't hit me until after that Z could be assessing me for something bad. The weirdness of it all just made me want to go to bed. We stopped the game and both went into the basement where his room and the guest room were. We say goodnight, I go to my room, and get ready for bed. I'm having trouble sleeping, just insomnia that I've had for a while, so I stay awake for around an hour, until I hear some movement outside my room. The walls were pretty thin, so I could hear footsteps walking past my door and up the stairs to the main floor, then back down quickly after. What struck me as odd was that I didn't hear the basement door open, which creaks when it does. The light didn't turn on, so I was confused what Z was doing. I heard him go back into his room, but I had this odd feeling. Just ever since I met him this night, he seemed a lot different than he's ever been. I decide to look him up on social media and Google to see anything out of the ordinary. Everything seemed normal until I found his Tumblr, which was linked from his inactive Twitter account that I found on my Twitter contact list. His Tumblr was, well, disturbing. There were graphic drawings of mutilated bodies of humans and animals, links to suspicious looking websites that I didn't dare to click on, text posts, stories about murdering, cannibalism, necrophilia, and torture. There were photos of guns, knives, and axes, which after looking closely, were taken in his bedroom. The last post, around a week prior, was a text post from the account saying he wished he could find someone easy to kill like a homeless person. I was immediately filled with dread. I knew he was going to do something. He must have gone up the stairs to lock the door. I packed my things. Luckily, I packed lightly and opened this small window at the top of my bedroom's wall. I started desperately climbing through, and as I was pulling my legs through, he opened the door. It was dark but the street light illuminated enough for me to see he was carrying something long and skinny, so probably a knife. He didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I just turned around, hopped in my car, and drove as fast as I could to my dad's house. I immediately blocked him everywhere and reported his Tumblr account not before telling the police. They said they couldn't do anything as the guns were registered under his dad and he hasn't actually done anything yet. Nevertheless, I told my other high school friends not to hang out with Z. Ever since then, I've been creeped out whenever I meet new people. Just the realization that someone I knew so well could underneath be this person 
who could hurt me so bad, who could kill me. I don't know what you're doing now, Z. I'm not sure I want to know, but I hope you're getting help. Anyways, let's not meet again. I had just finished my shift working as a receptionist for a gym. I worked the opening shift, so I was there from 4.30am until around 11am. I hadn't slept at all the night before, so I decided to order an Uber so that I could get home as soon as possible. When I got into the car, he noticed my uniform and started asking me about my work, my boss, my co-workers, the customers. He kept asking if they were fit, good-looking guys. I'm usually okay with idle chit-chat with Uber drivers, but this 20 questions was a bit much. He then became insistent that I should use my looks to get promoted by flirting with my boss. Said things like, just promise you'll sleep with him if he gives you a raise, and meathead guys are so stupid they'll do anything for a girl who smiles at them. I made a disgusted face and said I wasn't interested in sleeping with my boss, trying to deter the conversation. He said, you don't actually have to sleep with him, just get the raise and then if he tries anything, threaten to take him to HR. I kept saying I wouldn't do anything like that, and I found that kind of thing inappropriate, and he kept insisting that it was the only way to get ahead of my other female co-workers, and if I was a smart woman, I would use the advantages society gave me. At that point I was completely done listening to him, but wasn't any closer to my home, so I just stopped responding. He then said, Oh, I get it. You're a good girl type, probably waiting for Prince Charming to take interest in you and beg you to marry him. Again, I said nothing. I'm not the type to defend myself to someone I'll never see again. He then went on this rant about how all marriages are a sham and it's impossible for any human to be monogamous with one person because it's just not in our instincts to only sleep with one person and that I'd be wasting my time being celibate because I should be having sex with as many men as possible, since I'm biologically made to breed and take care of children, and I'd feel much more fulfilled if I did just that. This dude actually said all of that out loud. I couldn't believe it. We finally made it to my address, and he turned around and asked if I had an Instagram, and if he could follow it, and asked if I would rate him five stars. I told him I didn't have an Instagram and got out of the car and kept walking up the street past my house until he drove away. So creepy Uber driver, let's not meet again. So how my friend group works is we have our little circle of people who we hang around with most often, but for big events or bonfires or something similar, we expand and a couple different friend groups join. Ben is a part of one of these extended friend groups. He is someone who always posts different and interesting things, who always has something to say. I've gotten along really well with Ben at these events, and we always end up chatting. I've always found him to be a different and unique individual. Ben started going to my local college this year. He shot me a Snapchat basically saying, hey, all my friends went away to different schools and the only person I have to talk to from the area is my now ex-girlfriend. I was wondering if you wanted to get a group together and hang out, because I'd like to have some new friends around. It was actually a really nice message, because with the course I'm in, I don't get to make many friends, and all my close friends are spread out now too. So, I said yes. The hangout was initially supposed to be one of my friends, him, and one of his friends. It was a day after class and I just got home. He told me he was going to take a quick nap before we all head out. When he wakes up, he tells me it's now too late and he has other plans he forgot about. That's totally fine, I wasn't upset about it. I cancel with my friend too so I can just sit down and do some homework. He texts me a few hours later. I didn't give him my number. He found it. Telling me his other plans got cancelled and he was now available again and wondering if I still wanted to do something. I said that my friend was now out of the city and he said he texted his friend but they didn't answer. He decided to pick me up and go for a drive and just chat. Normal enough. Ben gets to my house around 10. I go and hop into his car and he speeds off. Oddly enough, he's talking in an accented voice, kind of like Jamaican or something similar. 
I thought he was just being goofy, so I played along. Sometimes I would answer back in the accent, but then I started to think it was weird that he wasn't talking in his own voice at all. He was driving like a maniac down the street, telling me how he was drinking earlier because he thought he was going to a party. I asked him if he was drinking and driving, and he said no, he only had a few sips. I know I probably shouldn't have gotten in the car then, but at this point, we are flying down the highway and I'm scared. He begins to rant about his ex, telling me that there was infidelity and trust issues on his end, and couldn't tell me what they were because he didn't want me to think badly of him. He told me he was going to marry this girl and have her children. He ranted about her and got on tangents and started to scream and yell. I started to think maybe he was on some drug or something. We arrive at my college, a half hour to 40 minute drive away in another city, and he says we should get out of the car. I'm already scared and my phone is dying, so I just listen to what he says. At this point I'm literally thinking he might kill me. He took me for a walk through the light woods and then started to make sounds like a creature. He would make like dinosaur sounds or sounds like the grudge. He would also walk like a creature, morphing his body into weird creepy movements. I requested for us to go home because I was literally terrified. We get back into the car and start our drive home. He pulls out a pipe and smokes something. I told him that he shouldn't do that, but he doesn't listen. Now he begins to yell. He starts back on his tangents about life again. He pulls over the car to get out and do some jumping kicks? Like what? At this point my phone is dead. He gets back in the car and puts on his favorite song. This song begins slow and then picks up a little later. It's like a four minute song. He begins to scream along with the lyrics and smash the windows and dashboard and wheel with his hands, stomping his feet. I've seen someone passionate about a song before, but not like this. Ben swerves all around the road until we get to my house. He then turns to me and says without an accent, I know it's late, but did you want to have sex? In the most casual tone in the world. I gave a nervous laugh and said, actually, I'm good. He turned to the back seat to get something, but I got out of the car and booked it to my house. I locked the door to my house and my bedroom door in my room, as if he would break in. It might not sound as terrifying as it was for me in the moment, but at the time I was shaking out of pure fear. I don't know if he was just on some crazy drug or if he had a split personality or something. But I've never met a person who I've looked at and thought to myself, you're going to kill someone someday. I really hope he doesn't see this, because I actually see him at school frequently. So yeah, fun life. This happened early this week, and it still freaks me out. I work at a hotel in my town and was driving my husband's truck into work, as he was taking mine to the shop to get serviced. He has a very large truck, and I only drive it when I absolutely have to. When I pull into the side parking lot, I notice the entire lot is covered in snow, and no one can see the lines for the spots. So I begin looking like a moron, and try to park in what I hope is a spot, backing up and moving forward several times. When I finally park, I get out of the truck and grab my backpack when I hear someone yelling from the sidewalk from behind the parking lot. Hey! You need to learn how to friggin' park. I'm embarrassed, but just close the truck, lock it, and begin walking to the front of the building. Now the hotel has a side entrance for employees, but it takes a code, and I have a crappy memory, so I just walk to the front and go through the main entrance. I hear the guy yelling again. Did you hear me, bitch? I walk faster and take a peek behind me. The guy is following me. I keep walking, but call back. Please leave me alone, I need to get to work. Before I can reach the corner of the building and make my way to the entrance, the guy grabs my arm and spins me around. I will never forget what this guy looked like for as long as I live. He wore dark clothes with a torn up winter coat. His eyes were bloodshot and he smelled like a combination of cigarettes and whiskey. I guess he must have been drunk, but he didn't slur at all when speaking to me. You're coming with me. The guy began dragging me back to the truck and I tried to pull my arm away from him. Let go of me! Give me the keys, we're taking a drive. 
I began to yell for help and his grip on my arm got tighter. I'm a 26 year old woman, not skinny, but a lot smaller than this guy. He was dragging me easily and the snow on the ground just made my feet slide along the ground. Someone help, please. No one was near us and I keep fighting to get away from this guy. I prayed that there would be guests that could possibly hear me, but it was our slow season, so most likely there was no one in the rooms on that side of the building. The guy turns back to glare at me. Shut the hell up and give me the keys. Now I was carrying my backpack on one shoulder, as it was big and bulky from my uniform and shoes. I quickly slipped the strap down my arm, grabbed it, and swung it right into his face. The guy let go of me and I just ran for my life to the front doors. I heard the guy screaming but ignored him. I was way too scared to look back at him. I ran inside and all the way to the employee locker rooms. When I finally calmed down enough, I went to the front desk to talk to security. Sadly, there were no cameras on that side of the building so nothing was recorded. They called the cops and I made a report. The cops informed the general manager of the hotel that they needed to seriously consider security cameras on that side of the building, as drunks and druggies, as drunks and druggies were known to be in this area. There was a bar just a couple streets down. They got the description of the guy and said they would keep an eye out for him. The manager apologized like crazy about the incident, but I told him it wasn't his fault. He's a really good guy. I did ask the security guard to follow me out so I can check on the truck. Thankfully, it was fine. The security guard promised to make more rounds outside, especially that early in the morning. If there is an update, I will post it. Creepy kidnapper, let's not meet. There is this hotel at the Bulgarian seaside, in which we have an apartment. To be honest, that's a strong word for it, because it's just a big room with a giant bed, refrigerator, big windows on both of the walls, and a small bathroom. It's on the ground floor, and again, both of the walls are facing the parking lot of the hotel. Despite all that, it's perfect for me alone. It's right next to the beach, and that's why I've been spending some of my summer vacations there. So July, three years ago, I'm spending a week with my ex-boyfriend there, and three to four weeks alone after that. My ex always said that the owners of the hotel are a bunch of creeps. Whenever we went out of the room, we had to walk a path passing through the reception, where they used to sit all day long, doing nothing. The old dad, 60, his son, Kroom, 40, and his daughter, 45, and her husband. When you pass, they all get silent and stare at you every freaking time. I was used to it already, but the boyfriend was irritated, especially when he caught Kroom staring at my ass smiling. After that, he used to stare him down deadly, right in the eye, whenever he got a chance. So my ex goes back to the city and it's now the third week. I've been alone and the night is really hot, so I open both windows wide open and put the curtains above them to defend myself from being peeked at. After all, I'm at ground level, and my bed is right below both of the windows. I wake up in the middle of the night and I feel like someone's watching me. This happens the next few nights. I'm easily scared and paranoid, but I was alone, so I've been telling myself to chill, and that's just my crazy mind trying to scare itself. Some nights went by without problems. Meanwhile, Kroom tried to talk with me two to three times when I'm off to the beach. So it's around 1am, I'm falling asleep, and I hear footsteps outside the path. It's not strange, there are some people next to me staying at the same kind of apartment. Maybe someone's coming home or going out partying. But the steps stop at one point, really close outside. I hear all of it because of the open windows. I'm sitting in the bed now and listening when I notice that the freaking door handle is moving slowly up and down. I kind of lost my cool, but stayed quiet and gave some nice job, girl, to myself for locking the door. After that, nothing happened and the person just walked away. I closed the windows, called my dad and told him what had just happened. He told me to lock and close everything and that he'll take me in the morning. It's a five hour drive. 
This was three years ago. Last night, we were having dinner and my dad is like, do you remember your sea adventures? And he proceeds to tell me that he has made his own little investigation back in the day and asked the owners of the hotel for security camera records. They check the ones at the parking lot and see a male figure walking around. The part with the door handle wasn't in the camera's range though. My dad remembers of my strange midnight waking up routine and tells them to check older records, in which they all see a man getting at my window and peeking through the curtains, standing like that for 15 to 20 minutes. The woman finally recognized her brother and told my dad he has mental disabilities and begged him not to press any charges and that they'll take better care for him and look after him. So good guy dad did not press charges and it appears we're selling the apartment. So, anyone interested in buying? Strange and awkward croon? Let's not meet. So this happened when I was 19 or 20. I'm 31 now. I rarely drink or go out anymore. But last weekend, a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in a couple of years asked me out, and we ended up going to a club on the same street where this story takes place and reminded me of it. Legal drinking age in Brazil is 18, so people here start partying pretty early, and let's face it, no one really knows their limits when they start drinking. My friends and I had gone to this club, I honestly can't remember the name right now, but I know it closed down a couple years back. We had a great time, and the sun was coming up as we were leaving. Most clubs here give you a credit card when you walk in, where you either put in the money you plan on spending, or they work as a personal digital tab, where bartenders add up what you're drinking, and you pay for it on the way out. I pay for my stuff and sit outside to wait for my friends, who are taking a long time to get out, probably due to being drunk as hell. As I'm sitting there, I notice a car across the street, two dudes on the front seats, one out of the car trying to make this clearly drunk out of her mind girl get inside as well. She's mumbling, stumbling, struggling to keep her eyes open, and she's saying no, I don't want to go, over and over, shaking her head clinging onto the car door, as the guy keeps telling her to let go and get inside, that they're just going to a friend's apartment to drink some more, it'll be fun, come on. I watch, wondering if I should do something. If no one else is seeing this happen, I look at the club's security guard, he looks at me and shrugs, like it's not his responsibility. I look back at the girl and I'm really uncomfortable, but also scared. My friends are still nowhere to be seen. I'm alone, the security guard is clearly not doing anything, and there's three of the guys. What if they decide to try and get me too? The girl says one more time that she doesn't want to go with them, and before I realize what I'm doing, I'm getting to my feet and shouting, HEY! The guy stops trying to push the girl into the car for a moment, and looks at me. She said she doesn't want to go, dude, I say, starting to make my way across the street even though my hands are shaking, and my voice is probably not the most convincing. She's our friend. She's just drunk and being cranky. It's all good. We're just going to take her home, he says. He seems a bit nervous and not exactly angry, which makes me feel a bit better or less scared. Do you know them? I ask her, and she just shakes her head no, using the door as support to keep herself on her feet. Creep number one, the one who was trying to push her into the car, looks at me, then to his friends, who seem frustrated, but starts saying, come on man, let's go, just leave it. Creep number one, now looking a bit pissed, grabs the girl and pushes her towards me before getting into the car, and they all leave. The girl nearly falls on her face, but I grab her, and we walk back to the front of the club, my heart slowly going back to its normal rate. Only then I realized my friends had come out and were watching everything from across the street with confused faces. We all meet random people at clubs, at the door, walking down the street, so they probably thought I'd met someone. I start asking her what happened, if she's alone, where's all her stuff, and she's an incoherent mess, mumbling about losing track of her friends, her purse. She doesn't even know how she paid her time to leave. 
I ask for some help to the security guard. He says he can't leave his spot. He can't do anything. I explain what happened to my friends, and they talk to the hostess about it, who begrudgingly goes and checks the lost and found. Her purse is thankfully there, minus the money she had in her wallet, and we manage to call her parents. I talk to her mom because the girl can't explain anything, and I promise to stay there until the mom comes to get her. Thirty minutes later, the mom arrives, and I've never seen someone look so relieved and terrified at the same time. She thanks me and my friends profusely, and offers us a ride home, but as we lived in the next town over, she just drives us to the subway station. In the middle of all the craziness, I forgot to exchange numbers with any of them, so I've never heard of that girl or her mom again, but I hope she learned to be more careful with how much she drinks and who she talks to in clubs. Also, shame on her friends for not looking out for her or trying to find her when they realized she was missing. Though maybe they were all just as drunk as she was. Who knows? I know what I did was probably a bit reckless, but I wouldn't be able to just watch that car drive away and live with myself. Please be safe when going out, people. And creeps at nightclubs who try to take advantage of intoxicated people. Let's never meet again. I only found out about this a few years ago. I'm 28 years old. When I was about 5 years old, my mom and I lived in this duplex that was off a main road, and kinda in a wooded area. We lived on one side, and on the other was a woman and her son there. He was studying to be a teacher. My mother had me young, so she was about 25, and the guy was in his early 30s. He would often come talk to my mom. My mother said he would ask a lot of questions about me and ask my mother if it would be all right for him to take me for walks in the woods. My mother always declined. My mother worked in the operating room at the local hospital and was on call a lot so most weekends I stayed at my grandma's house. One night while I was at my grandma's house my mom was home alone sleeping. She woke in the middle of the night and said she doesn't remember if she heard something or felt someone in the room but she woke up. She could see feet wearing socks sticking out from the end of her bed. She grabbed her bedside lamp and was about to hit the intruder when our neighbor yelled her name and said his name. He couldn't explain why he was naked and only wearing socks, but he begged my mother not to tell his mother about it. My mother, of course, called the cops. She ended up going to court and making a victim impact statement against this guy because she was terrified he'd become a teacher and be around children. She says she is pretty sure he was there for me that night and is so happy I wasn't there. We ended up moving immediately because she couldn't stay another night in the house. So, neighbor who broke into our house wearing only socks, let's not meet. And also, let's pray you are nowhere near young children. Thank you for making it this far. I'd like to encourage you to subscribe if you like my content. If you'd like to follow me and want to be involved in what I'm doing slash talk to me, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. If you'd like an offline experience, check out the podcast, The Midnight Podcast. And if you're at all inclined, I've got some merch out there to be purchased if you'd like to support the channel. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the next video.